I'm back, and you slimmer me. <laughs> I'm still on the diet. <laughs> it's terrible. Anyway, forget my diet. I wish I could. This is what we're here for, the multi-effect switcher, MS3, from Roland Boss. Well, I call it Roland Boss, it's really the same people. Yeah, it doesn't look as if you get that much for your money, but uh, you got a few connectors and things. But that's always the case with this technology stuff, isn't it? You don't look like you get much for the money. But you know what? I'm going to show you what exactly you get. I'm going to show you the uh, programs, the way you can set it up. All the things, actually a lot of the things that people don't show you. And uh, yeah, that's always a good place to start. This is list price at... Uh, I noticed on the PC over there, £399, so it's probably 500 odd dollars, give or take, uh, in the USA. Now, the thing is, that's not the cheapest thing around. You could go and get a GT100 cheaper than this. Then again, you couldn't hang all them pedals on the back. But then again, you might not want to. So that's a consideration. These little connectors down here, and they're only really three loops. Uh, start to cost you money worth bearing in mind so let's have a closer look at it let's get it off the box hold on what's this thing really all about well it's got some modulation in there it's got some delays in there it's got some reverb in there one or two other bits and pieces uh, yeah what else can I say you've got the FX loops we've got three loops if you want to stick pedals on them You've got the right and left, you've got some controls, you've got a, an out to your PC, you've got MIDI control, you've got an off and on and off, which is unusual these days. Uh, you've got obviously the input, and uh, a couple of other bits and pieces that it comes with, which include, yeah, a war wart, one of them. The news about this one is, uh, this is 100 to 240 volts as they are, this says MS3 on it, this one is... Just so you know, people ask me all the time, uh, it's uh, negative on the internal part of the connector and positive on the outside. And it's a typical sort of PSA boss pedal. This one's 9 volts, half an amp, PSA 230 ES. Comes with it. <coughs> so, so much for that. Well, what else do you get? Well, you get a, you get a real manual. Which is nice to know. I like uh, paper manuals, don't you? Rather than some disc you've got to go and start printing on. Uh, got a few legs, and underneath you can see where they stick, but more on that later. Yeah, have got to read me first. Let me try with the Chinese first if you want, but uh, yeah, okay, so much for that. And then we've got the multi effect switcher, and it's not as thick as you think. The amount for the English is just a tiny little bit there. So don't think you're getting value for money because you're not. There's not much in that. It's actually English. The rest of it's sort of gibberish, unless you come from the other country. So, including manual, including power supply, I like that. And uh, even including feet. It's all good. But it's still expensive. So let's go and take a bit of a closer look inside first of all to see what it's made like and then we'll come back we'll look at the top we'll look at the back the front the sides all the other bits and then we'll go through the programming on the computer and then uh, lastly uh, it'll be uh, not out there out there <laughs> bit of a review of how it sounds you know and i'll put some pedals in there yeah maybe some that aren't in here things like that who knows Hold on, let's get it open first. Here we are with the bottom taken off, and you can see it, the unit consists primarily uh, of one main PCB. You've got all the I.O. soldered to the board. All these sockets, that's what those are. You've got a main chip, as you normally have on these uh, type of units, because it's all digital. And very little else, just a few supporting chips, and away we go. So what I'm going to do is uh, actually flip this board over uh, just give me a few minutes, then we can see uh, what's really inside, as opposed to just the back side of this thing. Now, this is a quick shot of the other side of that board. Uh, you can see the I.O. 
all here. Uh, main processor chip, usually a memory chip, something like that. And then you've got all these other support chips and the rest of it. But the, again, the overall quality, absolutely perfect, as it always is, really, to be, tell you the truth, with the likes of Boss and Roland, the quality is exceptional. These are made in Taiwan, by the way, as opposed to China. And I think that does have quite a bearing on it. You know, Taiwan's had, they've had such a long time in surface mount technology uh, development and manufacture that uh, I'm not surprised that it's not perfect, and it is perfect. <laughs> so there. You've got another couple of little boards up there for the knobs and the rest of it in the display, but this is the main board down here. What I think is always a bit weird. You always seem to be buying the same chips <laughs> with just some different layout. Uh, amazing. Just all the same chips. But there you go. I'm just going to flip this back together because there's not really much more to talk about with it. Uh, I might put the odd bit on screen after. Okay, well here we are round the back. I've put it all back together and uh, lo and behold, there it is. <laughs> you didn't think I wouldn't do it, did you? No, of course. Okay, we've got uh, an input here for the guitar, obvious. The first loop, the send and the return. Now you can put what you want in that loop, the same as you can in loop two or loop three. And you can turn these three on or off uh, with one press of a button once it's all programmed up. A bit like some of the old systems I used to have, uh, well I still have, uh, out in the studio. Uh, a bit like ground control, except they've got eight loops. So you've got these three loops, and as I said, you could put what you want on there. You might put just one pedal on it. You might put two or three pedals on it. Or you might have a particular type of pedal in this loop one, different type in loop two, so you can place them in different places. In the, uh, in the chain, but we'll come to that later on. Uh, so then we've got the third loop. Again, you could do a lot of things with that. You could even take one of the uh, rack units that I have, say uh, TC Electronic G Major 2, stuff it in one of these loops, and then have a fantastic array of tones available at your command. In particular, because down this end is MIDI, and MIDI can send out a control command or, or a, some type of command to control the uh, TCG Major 2. That way you don't need all these pedals and all the wires and the rest. You just need one in and one out and you're in business. Moving along, uh, we've got a, light, a right and a left. And as typically the, the case here, the left's normally the mono out. Yeah, this control out uh, is control out one and two, and if you use a stereo pedal on that, you could use it, for example, for flipping uh, channels on an amp, as an example. But you can use it for a lot of things. Now, the thing to note about this, just as an aside, if you notice, the washer behind it is a plastic washer compared to all the steel ones. And also on the inside, there's also a plastic uh, standoff on this one, as opposed to all the others. So if you do pull one apart, just remember to put it back right, won't you? <laughs> Moving along, we've got the control in. So this is where you'd put your pedals, expression one, expression two. Or control one and two and control three and four. Again, they're probably stereo uh, so that you can flip between one or two or three or four. If you get the idea. Don't worry too much about it. It's not rocket science, right? Then we've got a, a USB out, which can go straight to your PC. Uh, so we can use this for lots of things, uh, including recording and stuff like that. But I'll get to that later, just in case it can't actually stream audio. <laughs> I haven't looked yet. As I said, we've got a MIDI, MIDI out. That can control lots and lots of things. Uh, you know, you might put that TC electronic down there and control it, the MIDI, as I said. We've also got a power on and off, which I found to be quite amazing, really, bearing in mind that nobody else does it these days, or they don't seem to. Lastly, we've got the power connector, which tells us to use the Boss PSA-S, I think it is from here, adapter only. But you could really use any as long as they have the requirements that we spoke about at the beginning of the video. What I also like on here is all the standards are covered. It's made in Taiwan. 
all the uh, references to CE approval, FCC approvals and all the rest, it's all here. There's a ground connector there, just in case you want to use it to get rid of some sort of ground hum or something like that. That's the back of it. Oh, and you can actually use one of them Kensington locks on here. So it sort of locks the thing down from being stolen. Which could be helpful when you're doing gigs sometimes. <laughs> Let's go have a look around the front. Now we're going to come back to this front uh, presently and uh, do a bit of a run through, but I just want to go through some of the controls really, just to get you familiar with it. If you notice here, we've got four push pedals, uh, or buttons if you will. Uh, if you press two of them, you get a bank down. If you press two of them, you get a bank up. So there's your up and down as well. So that's in effect six pedals. Uh, we've got a memory mode or a manual mode, uh, just depending what we want to do. If you uh, <clears throat> hold it down for two seconds, you get a tuner uh, and it mutes the output, by the way. Then we've got uh, three knobs down here, which are variable depending on what you're doing, but we'll have a look at them in a bit. We've got all the various things that can be turned on or off for a particular preset. That's how I see it anyway. We'll find out later. <laughs> we can lock down uh, particular uh, settings and things like that. And the rest are for menus, on and off uh, of the lock. Editing, exit or enter. Usual sort of, actually to be honest, usual sort of row and sort of ins and outs and controls, uh, for want of a better word. Got a screen across here that we're going to see a bit later. Uh, when I get the PC set up and we go through all that rigmarole. But that's definitely worth doing with this pedal. So that concludes the overall view of it. Oh, by the way, just look down here because these actually light up above each pedal. You see them? I just forgot to mention that. Well, there you go. That's given us a bit of a rundown of what's inside the pedal and what's outside the pedal and the I.O. and all the rest of it. Now, that's not all this pedal's about. You don't have to have a computer to make it work. Uh, there's loads and loads of presets in here. I'll run through the quantities later uh, when we're doing the uh, computer stuff. But you can use it standalone. You can use the presets. You can make adjustments to the presets and we can store them and we can we've got user presets and factory presets. All the usual things that you'd have even in a GT100. So as a pedal, it's a sort of cut down version of GT100. There's a load of stuff, but more. <laughs> That's probably why it costs more. As you've seen inside, it's a pretty complex pedal. Well, actually, I decided to uh, show you some of this uh, just while we're here, so we can get this out of the way. Nothing really complex on any of this. If you think about it, uh, what you've got is you've got your menu here on the right. We click that. Assuming you can see the screen. I've got a number of things across here. On this one, I've got currently display, global, play, control out, and so on. Now, if you notice, this light here is underneath this button. That allows us to move along and choose which one of these items in the menu we want. Let's imagine we wanted to change the display. If you look at this button here, this says page or enter. If we hit that, assuming you can see it, we've got a little screen adjuster there and again the lights underneath this particular button so it's all very easy to change that oops it's having back as where it should be i don't know how much that's going to help you but that there contrast yeah and we can exit well, we've done that. If we want to move along, as I said, you come back to this. We can look at global, press enter. It's all pretty simple, really. We can sort of move along these settings. Exit when you've had enough. There's display, there's global, loads of things under there. Play, if we hit that, just say uh, enter. This is a uh, play option. Expression 1 hold, expression 2 hold, so on and so forth. Like I said, there's a lot of settings. I'm not going to run through every one because, well, it's just too much to do. I just want to give you the idea of what you do with these manually rather than, uh, you know, using a computer. 
So again, we can continue along, control out the knob features. Let's have a look at that, see what it says. Uh, yeah, patch, beats per minute, patch level, knob three. We got any more? No, I just got them choices. So we'll exit that. And we can carry on along. MIDI. Let's have a look at the MIDI. Enter that. No, oh, clock out on or off. No, oh, that's better enough. <laughs> Preferences. Patch number one, patch number two, patch number three. I don't know. I won't spend too long on it anyway because there's no real point. Auto off so you can make it turn off when you want it to. Factory reset. Not really that much in under there, but you know the fact is once you start getting into all the programming and all the stuff, uh, you know it's like everything else. Well, let's imagine we want to, you know. Uh, edit one of these patches, there's patch one, there's patch two, and so on. Are we changing things there? Let's go back to patch one, let's keep it as it was. Imagine we want to edit this, this patch. What you do, all very simple, press the edit button, there. And now we've got, think of this as an effect chain, uh, where we've got FX1, loop one, loop two, loop three, FX2, uh, looks like a noise gate there. Let's press the page across and we can hop across to have a look at the settings for FX1. So we just press the enter and that shows us that we've got the compressor which is light, sustain, level. Move across a bit, I don't think there's any more pages. Oh, there's another page, there's an attack, there's tone. No, only two pages on that, so we can exit that. One of the things to note here is we can take this FX1, the one that's preset up in here, and we take the second knob and we can sort of move it along. You notice that although it's moved along, L1 and L2 and L3 can't be moved. You can have it before them, and like such, but you can't have it between them, which is worth noting. But if you do want to uh, move it along, grab the second knob, and you can see that it's moved along after the loops. You can move any of these to any position, by the way. You can see how many is already in here. Loads and loads. Got reverbs, delays, modulation two, modulation one, MST, I don't know what that is, but we'll find out. But you can see they can move around and you can put what you want, where you want, because it does have an effect on the tone, doesn't it? It's very simple to do. When you've had enough of that, you just exit. Now to go up a bank, you basically press two pedals at once. It's not easy for me to do. There you are. Bank 49-1. Well, that doesn't really matter which bank we went to because it's difficult when you're doing demos up here. But I'm on another one and I can say, well, we might want to edit that one. And you can see you've got FX1, we've got modulation. We've still got the three stuck together. So, if you look at these three knobs on the screen below, it tells you what you can do with them. If you look at number three, it says type. So we can choose what we want that FX1 to be. Okay, and loads and loads of settings. Yeah, you see how many there is. There's just buckets and buckets and buckets of them. It's one of the reasons why. I wouldn't really want to sit here all day, let me exit that, without, you know, doing all this stuff. I mean, let's go back to bank up. That's bank one. And then we're back to one. So, you could have a pretty wide foot, by the way, to get both of these at once. And that's a bit of a shortcoming in my view. So, you might want to use the control pedals externally for that. Anyway, I hope it's just given you a bit of a rough idea of some of the things you can sit here and do. And, you know, I could go into great depths, uh, but I don't want to because this unit's been made easier by using a computer. Easier to set up and have, what, have it the way you want it, so to speak. So, so let's go back up and get the computer out. I could have sat there all day going through all this stuff, but you can't see the screen too well on there and uh, all the rest of it. So 
compute is the way to go with this if you can. One thing uh, I've complained about before and I'm going to complain about again, because I'm like that, is boss here, to supply this pedal, they put a power supply in it, they put a little chuck me eight me manual in and you can download the real one off the internet. But they don't include a USB cable, something which will probably cost them 60 cents to make and uh, they won't throw it in the box and it will cost you eight or nine quid for going at the right type from God knows where. Just not a good idea. It's unreasonable uh, to support all that and say, oh, yeah, it's got all the online stuff and not throw in a Tupney Amy cable. That's a criticism. Yeah, so I'm going to go get the PC down, but I think it can be used on a Mac, but we'll find out in a minute. Uh, let's get the PC out and uh, I'll have to find a cable that'll work. <laughs> It's one of those printer types with the square end on, you know, on the back of this thing. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, well, before we get down to actually anything with the computer, I just thought I'd show you another couple of little things. Here's the cable that they don't supply. It's this type with the, with the square on the end, if you can see that, regular with the other end. So there's the cable. I'll have to go and find. And these are the manuals if you want to bother to print them out. You've got... Uh, the MS3 parameter guide, which is 49 pages long, trust me, that. more trouble than it's worth. Then you've got, uh, the next one I printed out was the, uh, well, what was it? <laughs> so many. Using the MS3 editor librarian, well you might use it, but it's, it's a bit simple to use, I have to say. Then we've got the Boss multi effect Switcher MS3 Owner's Manual, well, that comes in the boot, but oh, that's just another one. And then we've got the Application Guide. Now, the, the Application Guide could be good, depending on what you do, because what you get with the Application Guide is various ways to set the thing up easily. Now, that sounds good to me. All the rest of it could be aggravation. And lastly, the only other thing I printed was the MIDI implementation chart, which, if you're going to do anything really serious with this uh, pedal, that's one of the ones you want. So, let's get all that rubbish out of the way, and uh, let's get the computer on. Okay, so let's run through how we set up the uh, various bits of software from Boss. I'll uh, go there now, and uh, we'll get the screen on there. Yeah, rock and roll. Updates were installed, it says here. <laughs> By the way, I'm doing this review uh, with a Windows PC with Windows 10 on, but there is a Mac driver, actually, and uh, you could use it on one of them if you insist. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, well, it's all pretty simple, really. Uh, what we've got to do is go to uh, the Boss website. It's a nice answer. We belong to boss.info slash us slash products slash ms-3 and you'll get this page here slide down here until you get to downloads yeah, i found this to be the easiest way first thing you want is the driver this one here that's for this machine so we click that well it looks like it's that one just pull that down Bit of luck. <clears throat> On it goes. I don't want to do any of this, I just want to put it down. <laughs> Download it. We'll stuff it on the desktop. alright just stuff it on the desktop so I created a directory for it on the desktop or folder should I say put it in there expand it out there we go it's not a very fast computer but just do the job for what we need there it is and there's the program. A couple of better information of how you do it. Oh, we'll come back to that later. So next thing to do is to plug in the uh, USB into the MS3 
and into your computer and uh, go from there. So let's go do that. OK, well, I had to update the MS3 to version 1.03 on the uh, firmware. And there's a procedure on the boss side for how to do that. So don't want to waste all time doing that in case you don't need it. I'm going to plug in now the uh, MS3. And uh, choose the program. And with a bit of luck, it should see the uh, MS3 now. A few minutes going to wake up. I think it is. I don't want to do that. Well, why not? Seems that Adobe Air has got to be updated. Let's finish that. Oh, there we go. Now sees the MS3, whereas you saw earlier that it didn't see it. It's a go into demo mode or something. So let's now click it. What we now have is interrogation of the MS3 by the librarian software and there it is running so we can bring that to full screen that wasn't too bad was it but remember you've got to be on 103 or you're going to have major troubles now taking a look at this first patch make sure you're on editor take a look at this first patch here if you click it you'll see that everything's changed I'll go back to the first one stay on editor and what you've got across the top here is all the effects that are in place. If you remember when we were looking at it through that little tiny screen, we had FX1 and three loops, FX2 and, and so on. But you might want to change that order. Uh, it's really easy. You just grab it, move it across, and you change the order. So these loops can be sort of moved around. But the loops can't, but these can. You see that you didn't actually move them. It's a bit weird, that is. But you can actually move these around just as easy as that. So, pretty boring really. Uh, now what we've got in here is, this This is the natural clean in one. Oh, we clip down. Oops. You can see all the FX and everything else that goes with it. And we can change them in here the hard way. We can stay there. Click on this one, for example, which is a compressor. And if we wanted to choose a different effect, we can do that very easily. I'm going to leave it as what it is. Uh, and we can change the, the type of compressor. Lots of different ones. Well, a few different ones. If you want, want to change the sustain, for example, you can press down and just go up and down. Or you can just grab it here and go up and down. Or you can go up and down one at a time here, which is a bit boring, so I tend to grab this one myself. <laughs> Have a listen as you go. Uh, and then we do the same with the other things, the levels and the attack, the tone, the rest of it. So, all pretty easy to do, really. And pretty easy to move these things around, like I said. We choose another one. Now we're on the noise suppressor. We can adjust that one simply. We've got a tempo up here. And uh, that can be used uh, to change the sort of speed of the overall feel of the thing uh, later on. I tend not to use that myself, but it's what people do. We've got a control expansion Hopefully, when it wakes up, it's a bit slow in the communication, I would say. Uh, and all the various things we can set for the control and expansion, uh, either control of or so on and so forth. You'll get the idea. Me personally, I like to stay in this one. <laughs> it's much easier. So it doesn't matter which one you move down to. Uh, it's a bit slow in fetching it, like I said. Here's a noise suppressor, chorus, just choose a few, you'll get the idea. At least I think you will. Yeah, chorus crunchy, there it is. We'll start off sort of similar, don't they? But if you notice, it sort of moved around a little bit. If we go back to this one, you should see everything move at the top, which it did. Nice and easy. Well, that's for editing 
the sounds. I could spend hours talking about, you know, what all the parameters are for every one of these things, especially when you move into this other stuff here. I'm never going to do that. I've got time to mess with it, but it's giving you an idea of where we're at. But then, of course, we've got the librarian, which is opposed to the editor. The librarian is a bit of a funny one as well, because they don't tend to think in the same way that I did. They have these things called live sets. You see that? So we create a live set. There it is. And then we can drag in. Oh, it's a bit slow. We can drag in the sounds we want. There's number two. Let's imagine we this live set. It's going to comprise of these effects that I want in there, or these presets, should I say. Uh, yeah, off it goes. Export it, import it. We can back it up. We can apply the live set, which will change this. I'm not going to do any of that. But you get the idea, I hope. Uh, I don't really want to spend all day on this. So we can have, you notice, I can have more than one of the same one. You might have changed something. I don't know. And we can save it. At least we used to be able to. Yeah, we can change the names, we can put different colours on it and all sorts of like that. Even notes. You get the idea. I applied the uh, live set to the MS3, so you watch what happens. God, it's a bit slow. That's what I'd describe it as. Could be my computer, of course, but well, who knows. If you look at the uh, unit, you can see that these here have now been pushed across into this order. You get that. I always think it's a good idea, by the way, to uh, have all these original uh, presets pushed across into a live set. So you've got a backup of them. One of the last things I'll show you, I don't want to spend long in here. It's when you've done your, your patch and you've changed whatever it is you've changed, you can go to right there. And you can write it out. To whatever you fancy. And don't forget you can change that by simply clicking, updating the name and so on. Pretty boring really. Yeah. If we go and look at them loops, I can turn them on or off per given preset. Very simple, really. So we're going to have them two on for this particular one. And save the patch. Let's leave it where it is. It wakes up. <laughs> it's a bit slow. We go and look at that first patch. You can see there they are turned on. More importantly, if you go across to the unit here, you can also see where they're turned on. All very simple, really. I'm just going to turn them back off. I don't want them on. I'm going to write it out. So we do the same again. I won't wait for the screen, we'll just whiz across because it's pretty instant over to the unit you can see now. But they're both off for this patch. Well, the thing is I could sit here all day faffing around with little <laughs> things on screen and that's not what we're here for really. But I did want to give you a little bit of an insight, very quick insight, into how easy it is to, to change settings or, uh, you know, uh, presets. Rather than faffing around down on this one. It was also interesting to note that if you've got something that's less than 1.03 on the firmware for this, you're going to need to update it because, as I showed you, anything less doesn't get seen, even though it was connected. Yeah, I also thought it was a bit slow on the communication. Now, it could be this laptop because this laptop really is a bit of a dog. <laughs> it's really made for the internet. Uh, but it, it works and it, it sort of does the job, so I'm not really too worried about that. 
Uh, of course, the next thing we're going to do is go out there, that way, and uh, have a play at some of the presets and things like that. And I'm only going to go through presets because I think that's an important aspect. Because I've always thought that anybody who makes a, a unit like this, a multi-effects uh, pedal, they don't load them up with crap presets. Now, many people will say to me, oh, they do. Well, do they? Step back and think for a moment. You've got this multinational company called Rowan Boss, and they spend millions of pounds <laughs> developing one of these, and then they load it up with crap presets. Really? Yeah. yeah. Which planet do you come from? <laughs> no, the truth is that they sound good to them. <laughs> they may not sound good to me or you, but they definitely sound good to the developers, else they wouldn't put them in there. Of course, different areas of the world have different views about what's a great tone and what isn't. Or even different areas of the, your own city, <laughs> even. And some guys will say to you, oh, that sounds terrible. And others say, wow, it's fantastic. So always remember that, that the presets they put in here to boss are great sounding presets. We'll find out a bit later whether any of them are any good for us. OK, enough of this frivolousness with computers and things like that. But the lesson was there to be learned that if it's not 1.03, you're not getting in there. And there's a bit of faffing around where, you know, the internet said you don't need the driver and the software said, oh yeah, you do. <laughs> it's a bit weird. The manual also said you didn't need the driver. Anyway, you can figure it out yourself. Let me get rid of all this junk. So getting back to the pedal. What do I think of the pedal? How would I rate it? Well, it's got the usual sort of sounds in there. It's very reminds me very much of uh, GT100, really. Very similar sort of sounds. Remember that GT1 I reviewed earlier, not that long ago? Uh, it might be up there somewhere for you to click on and check that review, because that was, that was a pretty good pedal for £160. Admittedly, it hasn't got the three loops, but apart from that, I question why this is £399, actually except that it's got a bit of metal on it, whereas the GT1 didn't. <laughs> it's a good pedal. Anyway, very, very sort of similar sort of product. That much more expensive because of these three loops. And I think that uh, I'd have a bit of trouble with that, personally, uh, for the price. So I think it is a little bit overpriced. You might get some discount out of somebody, but Boss on the internet and Rowan on the internet, if you go and look on the internet, you'll find they're all the same price everywhere. You have to go and badger the dealer to try and get some discount. And you end up ringing around Tom, Dick and Harry uh, to try and get a better price. Now, sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't. Don't waste your time when it all first comes out because nobody will give you any discount. They will like that. Miserable. <laughs> OK, so rating out of 10. I mean, I have listened to this pedal, so don't think that... I haven't heard it because I have. It's a reasonable pedal. But once again, I think that I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10. I think that price all the time seems to knock me back a bit. And that could be because of the pound against the dollar, which hasn't helped. You know, the pound's currently at about 132 or something like that. When it used to be 155 or 160. Well, that's a, that's a good 10 or 15% higher in its cost than where it normally would be. Uh, so if at £330, it would be quite good. At £399, it's not quite so good. And you'll have the same problem uh, around the world, I guess. You know, imports and exports and that sort of thing. But you American guys always have it good. Yeah, because it's in dollars, isn't it? So as a rating out of 10, I'll give this one... Really, it's going to get a 7. Uh, that doesn't relate to the sounds. And it doesn't really relate to the... Uh, to the editor or the librarian. I mean, there's, there's quite good actually as far as I did to librarians go. Yeah, it's that price. So it's on a seven because of that price. Uh, so nine, if it was 320 pounds, give or take, and seven for reality. <laughs> Don't forget to visit www.turningmckenzie.com for other reviews that aren't on YouTube, and uh, it gets updated occasionally. I'm way behind with it. 
Uh, so the music coming up, well, it might not be music, it might be just effects, or I don't know, it depends what mood I'm in. Uh, but it's coming up that way anytime soon. And uh, thanks for watching this one. It's an interesting pedal, but uh, there's far more interesting pedals I've got on here to, uh, to review anyway, presently. See you soon. Okay, well, here we've got the uh, the sort of uh, audio review of the uh, MS3, which is down there on the floor. I've only got the waffle stuck in a whoop one, and uh, I haven't bothered with the rest of it because I'm trying to get the effects across of what's in it rather than what's out of it, if you get the idea. Uh, well, it's in uh, natural clean at the moment, and uh, you get the idea. You can, you can hear the effects straight off. Yeah. Moving along a bit, we'll move along to uh, two, which includes the waterfall loop. <laughs> well, the waterfall in the uh, number two uh, loop mid boost. It says here, but I've got the uh, the waterfall in the uh, loop one, which is turned on, so it should be a bit of a weird. See what we get. I can hear it straight away. Don't know about you, but uh... oops. Yeah, listen. Oh, by the way, I'm just using a clean channel on the uh, 2555. Well, really, throughout this demo. So if you hear anything else, it's coming out of that thing. Just a bit of distortion there. Very nice. Okay, this next one uh, is a uh, 1-4 phase delay. Nice sounds. Really nice sounds. Well, you get the idea. Now, of course, just whipping up a bank because you've got to sort of hit two and then hop for the noise you want, which I'm going to say two one. So that's in there. But it, you've got to get your foot a bit near and it's a bit awkward, actually. You probably do well with the external controllers. Okay, this one's a chorus crunch, and I guess it's what it is. <laughs> This one's just called Simple Rig. Wow. Very simple. <laughs> what else we got on here? Dirty something. Dirty something space. actually. This next one's called uh, Twisted. <laughs> a bit like uh, somebody I know. <laughs> but she hasn't come out today. <laughs> this next one's uh, Fly By Chorus. Oh. Could be fly by night, but it isn't, it's fly by chorus. <laughs> Very 
nice. I always like the uh, sort of laid back sort of, uh, yeah, tones like this. This is uh, tremolo modulation and delay. <laughs> Now here's another one of those nice sort of uh, tones. It says here boost L1 chorus and delay. Well, I've got L1 turned off at the moment, but we'll flip that in in a minute. So let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> types of pedals I've always found that the, uh, the sort of cleaner or semi-distorted sounds seem to come out nicer. This one's uh, 05-3 which says L1 chorus BPM and delay. Well I'll turn the L1 off because I don't really want the uh, the waff bowling on this one. But you can hear it. <laughs> sound nice really really nice this one's talking about genty something or other I don't know it didn't sound genty to me but there you go here's one called uh, progressive ambience hmm. well maybe it is turned on it comes. Uh, actually it hasn't got that one turned on but it, that's what it says. <laughs> nice. But it's, uh, it's a sort of uh, lead guitar turn. <laughs> interesting because this one's uh, says here it says filtered and read one which is a bit like a it's sort of auto war but I, I, I left in the war full on L1 so so that could affect it too and you sort of get this <laughs> acoustic simulator here <laughs> sounds like an acoustic I've got one here that says uh, it says here edge modulation and delay maybe the edge that we know or the edge we don't know but it, uh, it's got a nice sort of uh, crunchy sort of not bad actually now these things 
things always have a slow gear on them. You know, from the original slow gear pedal, I think of the 70s or early 80s or something like that. I never use them, but it's on this one too. <laughs> And of course, for all you guys that should have been keyboard players, like me maybe, <laughs> uh, yeah, you get the organist. Nah, I'm worse on that than I am on this. <laughs> you might be the same, so don't laugh. Now this one's a bit tasty. This is called the uh, Fretless Ballad. I mean, who knows, but it just sounds nice and smooth. <laughs> I know some of you guys out there are going to really get off on this one. It won't be me. <laughs> Some people like that. Not for me. I put this one on because uh, we did uh, a review recently of the uh, freak, freak Out, you know, the sustain pedal. This this thing's called a Queen Feedback. But is it? No. Is it? time it says here maybe it'll warp if you put a pedal on it I don't know I didn't bother to do that but uh, it's nice tones <laughs> For, for clean tones on, on this pedal. I, I really like the clean tones. So you might use the clean tones and uh, whip in your own distortion pedal and things like that uh, in the loops for the other stuff because the cleans are really... <laughs> Once again, you've got this direction towards nice uh, tones. This is called a uh, bright arpeggio. <laughs> got a bit of a rock tune here. This is called uh, Fat DS Drive, whatever that is. It says switch DS to L1. Well, it probably does. I've left the L1 out because we know what that is, but uh, you get the idea. <laughs> Mid boost distortion. 
Well, it is a mid boost distortion, but it's a bit tinny to me. We'd have to play around a bit. So that's not too difficult. <laughs> Distortion, it says, or oh, maybe it is. Like I said, in, this is a bit of an unusual one, but it's still uh, it's still more city train. It's clean than anything, really. <laughs> These are in stereo as well, it's not coming through in stereo on there because it's just coming straight out the speaker in. A bit idle today, but don't worry about that. Uh, this is called Re In Y Studio. So it comes in something called, I can't even read it, something R&B. Oh. <laughs> Well, there are many more sounds in there, but uh, what my recommendations would be for this pedal would be to use external uh, flips for up and down and things like that, and, and control, uh, because I think the pedal lacks a lot without that. It's certainly got the connectors on, so nothing stopping you doing it if you've got plenty of money, <laughs> as always. I think the, uh, the distortions are not quite uh, where they could be. They're all right. I guess if you play around with them a bit, uh, you're going to get Reasonable distortions, passable distortions, that's a great phrase. But because you've got the three whips, well, why mess with them? Uh, why not get some decent ones on the outside? <laughs> but apart from that, uh, it's a small pedal. It's nice and easy to use once you get used to the software. Well, it's easy enough through the, through the, the fiddly. Uh, you've had the score for it, so, well, that's it. I'm not going to do any more with it because it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't give me the sort of lead guitar sounds that, that I want, and I, I couldn't really be bothered to sit there and mess around with it. So that's the review, and uh, hope you liked it, and uh, yeah, more soon. In fact, uh, the next thing is uh, going to be an Epiphone Prophecy uh, Les Paul. That's one of the, the, the next ones that, to come up. It's a second-hand one. Uh, my grandson owns it, so you'll see him on there, and... Uh, yeah, pretty good. It's got EMGs on it and all sorts of things. And I, th I think we paid £320 for it, which is about $400. So uh, what do you get for your money? Well, that particular guitar is really good. Uh, I mean, some of the Epiphones are not so great, but that one, pretty awesome. So look forward to it. Yeah. Hope you like the review and uh, see you again next time. Now get out of here.